Tech family, it's Josh. I have been inundated with questions about recommendations for students buying a laptop. As I spent a ton of time at university doing three degrees, two in computer science and one in business, I thought that's what we'll talk about today. The way I'm going to do this video is to first go over general laptop buying advice for students, then I'm going to provide some specific guidance for certain types of students, including those studying computer science, programming, photography, video editing, and even those who plan to do some gaming or streaming while at college. And during this, I'll be telling you my picks right now for each of these types of students at a variety of price ranges, including for those who are on a tight budget, those looking for a value buy, and those who are buying a premium device. By the way, I'm Josh, and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video you like what you watched, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up, and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these. Portability. Yes, right now most of you will be starting from home, but I think we need to expect that at some point you'll be returning to the classroom. You'll want a laptop that will comfortably fit into your backpack. You don't want a laptop that's too big or distracting in class, so 17-inch laptops are out. They are also too heavy in my opinion. In fact, I personally think any laptop that is over about five pounds with the charger is too heavy for a student. Also, try to buy a laptop that charges via the USB-C port. If you forget your charger at home, you'll easily be able to find someone who can lend you one. Now, on that note, if you do want to do some AAA gaming, gaming laptops tend to be heavier due to their more powerful components and the cooling system required. But they also have significantly heavier power bricks, so keep an eye out for those that also support USB-C charging in addition to their heavier bricks. For example, the new Razorblade Advance for 2020. This can make the laptop more portable than its competitors, as you can buy a small charger to take with you for days that you don't need to use that graphics card. I'd also look for a laptop with decent battery life. For a small laptop, you want at least a 50 watt hour battery. For example, the new Dell XPS 9300, which has excellent battery life, has a 52 watt hour battery. If you are going for a laptop with a more powerful CPU and a higher resolution display, I'd look for at least an 80 watt hour battery, as these components chew more power. Having good battery life will give you more freedom to head out for a couple of hours without the charger. That being said, even for a full day school, I still recommend you bring a charger with you. No laptop is likely to last an entire day with moderate use reliably. This is why I want you to consider the overall carry weight of the laptop, including the charger. Next, you will probably be studying for a long time, potentially years. Look for a laptop where you can get an extended warranty, which is easy to service. Either where someone comes to your place to fix it, or you take it to a store like Apple's. Many of these include accidental damage protection or allow you to upgrade to it. Two laptops that I purchased the extended warranty on and owned for several years needed it. My 2016 MacBook Pro, which I dropped, and my Microsoft Surface Book 215, which stopped working after one and a half years. For peace of mind, I'd advise you to save some of the money you intended to spend on the laptop for the warranty and accident protection. If possible, buy from a place you can return to. You never know what issues you will find that frustrate you. I certainly try to cover these kind of niggling things in my reviews, but even I sometimes miss some. That way you can test it out thoroughly before deciding to keep it. If you are on a tight budget, refurbished laptops, which are normally those that have been returned, are a decent option, so long as they are covered by the return policy from where you buy them from. You can then test it to ensure it's working properly. And you want to buy from a place where the laptop is still covered by their manufacturer's warranty. Places that tick these boxes are Apple's refurbished store, Dell's outlet, Amazon warehouse deals, and Best Buy open boxes. Now, if you are not on a budget, I'd avoid this. Some of these laptops are returned because they have a genuine problem. Out of the five laptops I have personally bought refurbished, two I had to send back because of issues, and three I kept. For specs, I would ensure you get a minimum of a 4-core 8-thread processor on Intel laptops such as an i5 or i7 found in Intel's 8th gen, 9th gen, or 10th gen CPUs. If you are going AMD, I'd recommend a minimum of 6 cores and 6 threads such as the new 4500U processor. Honestly, these AMD processors right now chew less power than their Intel counterparts and generally produce less heat. Both are a good thing. So, if you can go AMD, I definitely recommend that. Now, you'll notice I did mention some older processors from Intel. Right now they are on the 10th generation, but I included their offerings from two years ago. That's because Intel's i5 and i7 laptop processors haven't really changed all that much in the last couple of years. Certainly not since they increased their threads and cores across the board in their 8th generation lineup. As most laptops have thermal constraints that don't allow you to run the processor at their max speeds, the difference between Intel's 8th gen to 10th gen isn't going to matter a whole lot. Therefore, 
if you are looking for a deal, I'd strongly consider buying a model with a processor from a prior year. For those who are considering a dual core laptop like the MacBook Air base model, please don't. These laptops aren't going to have the performance to ensure basic operation will be snappy over the years of your degree. Same goes for 4 gigabytes of RAM. It won't cut it. 8 gigs should be the minimum. Even today, you'll notice slow operations on many programs. Definitely ensure your laptop includes solid state storage rather than a spinning hard drive. These laptops are substantially faster and quieter. Luckily, most laptops now come with SSDs. I would aim for at least 256 gig because one, 128 gig SSDs tend to be slower than higher capacity SSDs. And two, you could be at school a long time and may get into things that require more storage than you initially expected, like creating videos. Once you install basic programs, 128 gig just won't give you much room. For the display, I personally think that 14 inch is where it's at, especially for newer laptops that have thin bezels and are basically the same size chassis as 13 inch laptops. This should give you ample screen space to fit documents on while still being super portable. That being said, Apple's macOS does make excellent use of screen real estate, so I do still feel the MacBook Pro 13 is still a good option. Now, in terms of the quality of the display itself, I find anything under 300 nits to be too dim. You will be squinting in bright environments. Please check how bright the laptop is by watching reviews like mine on YouTube or looking up the laptop on Notebook Check. When you do, just make sure the reviewer has the same model screen that you're looking at, as many laptops have different screen options. In terms of color accuracy, just try to get a display as accurate as your money will allow. Once the laptop has less than say 80% sRGB, you'll definitely notice that the colors are off. Overall, the quality of a laptop's display is the primary difference between a cheap laptop with a dim 250-nit screen and inaccurate colors to a premium one with a bright 500-nit screen and 100% color accuracy. Also, please ensure your laptop can output to an external monitor at 4K 60fps. You may want to add a more color accurate or larger display in the future. Let's touch on Chromebooks. They look pretty and are cheap, but I'd be careful of buying one as a student. Many classes require you to install specific software. This software may not be available on Chrome OS. Lastly, pricing. Most manufacturers and stores have student discounts. Please make sure you're taking advantage of these. Also, several manufacturers do have coupons available on their sites, so check them out. And try coupon plugins like Honey as well. There is a deals area in my Discord channel that we frequently post deals to, so feel free to join that as well. All right, recommendations for laptops for general students. Please note, I'm not gonna say the exact prices as they change regularly, and as mentioned, there can be discounts available. If you're on a tight budget, I'd look to Lenovo's IdeaPad 5 with AMD. These are really high quality machines for the price with powerful processors, good specs, and a passable screen. The main downside is their screens aren't that color accurate and their fan isn't completely silent on light loads. If you have more money to spend, check out Lenovo's X1 Carbon. You'll get a better keyboard, better display, a more premium feeling chassis, and quieter operation. For a little more money, I'd recommend the HP Spectre X360 13 with OLED. It has an incredible screen and many of the benefits of the X1. Even though it's only 13 inches, the fidelity of its display should compensate for the smaller screen size. By the way, I'd probably skip over the MacBook Pro 13 with 8th gen. I do feel the other two I mentioned give you more for your money at a similar price point. At the high end, I'd get the MacBook Pro 13 10th gen. This laptop is very powerful, has great speakers, solid battery life, a phenomenal screen, comes with 16 gig of RAM, and has that excellent Apple build quality. I would skip over the Dell XPS 9300. I've had three of these. Even though they do have great battery life, they get really hot under light load. And there are issues. For example, the right speaker in mind seems to have blown. All right, let's talk about needs for specific students. For software developers, let's start off with RAM. Coders need more RAM than casual users. This is because you'll be running a lot of applications that other users won't, such as integrated development environments like IntelliJ. Now on top of that, you've got to run the application you'll be coding. This may require even more RAM to load a decent amount of data into memory for processing. What compounds this is if you are required to run virtual machines for some of your classes. I know containerized apps like those using Docker are gaining popularity over VMs and they use less RAM, but they still require RAM. So moral of the story is this, I'd like developers on 16 gig of RAM if you can afford it. In fact, if you are on a tight budget, I'd opt for more RAM over a less color accurate display. 
If you are doing machine learning or other AI-based tasks, you want to get a laptop with a dedicated graphics card. These tasks require concurrent processing that GPUs offer and can certainly utilize NVIDIA's CUDA. By the way, you will survive learning to code with less specs than what I am recommending, but you will likely see some slowdowns. Please research what you need by checking the details of your class and if unsure, reach out to faculty members or alumni. Also check whether your school offers access to server environments such as those in the cloud. This will enable you to run heavy processing tasks there rather than on your laptop, which means you won't need as powerful a laptop. That being said, it's generally more convenient to be able to just use your laptop, so if you can afford what I'm recommending, please buy it. For laptops for software developers not doing much AI, I'd go for similar recommendations as I gave for regular students, just with a minimum of 16 gig of RAM. So IdeaPad 5 for those on a budget, X1 Carbon for my value pick, and the MacBook Pro 13 10th gen for my premium pick. If you're planning to do a lot of AI related classes, then as I said, I'd like to see you with a dedicated GPU, ideally an NVIDIA 1650 or higher. I'd recommend the new HP MV15, or if you have a bit more money to spend, the 15 inch Dell XPS 9500. Just make sure your XPS has a working trackpad. Both are highly configurable and meet all the specifications that I recommend. You do lose a bit of portability due to their increased weight, but they are both powerful and capable machines. At the premium end, something like the Razer Blade Advanced series, these are still very portable and will give you access to more powerful graphics. All right, for those studying photography, film, or planning to make videos, in addition to what I recommend for regular students and coders, you will want a color accurate display. Plus, if you can afford it, a high resolution retina or 4K one. This will be important if you're working with high resolution content. Also, having a strong GPU is important for you, especially if you plan to edit videos. You are going to need storage and lots of it, at least 512 gig. To put it in perspective, each of my YouTube videos requires about 200 gig of storage. I'm filming on a two camera setup at 4K each, but nonetheless, I want you to have enough storage to be creative. Lastly, an SD card reader would be handy so you can quickly transfer photos and videos to your laptop. At the budget end, I like the Asus ZenBook 14 I reviewed on the channel. It comes with a color accurate display, is powerful with the new Ryzen CPU paired with a dedicated MX350 graphics, and it's extremely affordable. Unfortunately, it only has eight gig of RAM and you can't upgrade it. Bumping up, I'd get the MacBook Pro 13 10th gen. It is a powerful machine with better build quality and solves a lot of issues that I had with the Asus ZenBook 14, like no USB-C charging, bad backlighting of the keyboard, brighter screen, etc., etc. That being said, the Intel G7 graphics, although good enough for photography and 1080 video editing, is absolutely not good enough for 4K. I don't care what other reviewers are telling you. For 4K editing, I recommend the new XPS 9500 with its 4K-like screen. It's a powerful laptop with an SD card reader and a great display. If you can afford it though, my ultimate laptop for you is the MacBook Pro 16. It's lighter than the XPS 15, has a bigger display, better speakers, longer battery life, and doesn't suffer from the quality control issues of the new XPS line. For gamers, the graphics in the new Ryzen 4000 series laptops or the G7 graphics in Intel's 10th gen is enough to get you 60 FPS in eSports titles. However, if you want to play AAA games, you are going to want more powerful graphics. Unfortunately, that often means you'll be trading more power for a bigger, heavier laptop. At the budget end, I'd recommend the new HP Omen. I like the model with the 144Hz screen that Best Buy offers. You get one of the new, powerful Ryzen processors with a solid 1660 Ti graphics card, a bright screen, and good build quality for an excellent price. My main gripe with it is the edge where you put your palms. It feels a bit sharp. You may want to get a wrist rest to place there. At the high end, I'd look at either an Aero 15 or Razer Blade Advanced. The blade is more portable, especially as it supports USB-C charging, so you won't have to bring that bigger power brick with you. However, it gets very warm when gaming. You'll probably want to consider using an external keyboard. The Aero 15 runs cooler than the blade and has a more comfortable keyboard. However, it does have a couple of niggling things. The fans aren't as quiet for light loads, the secondary function keys don't light up, it doesn't charge via USB-C, and it has a bigger chassis. All right, well, that's all I have time for. I hope it's helped you out. If you want specific help from me, when I have free time, I do provide laptop advice free on the Discord chat, link in the description below. However, I am super busy, and if you want a response, become a Patreon supporter. That will unlock a special Discord chat just for you where I make a best effort to prioritize my responses to those supporters. Please note, that chat will only be unlocked once your first contribution is processed. Before I go, I have made a video on how to test your new laptop thoroughly to ensure it's working, which I'll post in the description below. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. Until next time, I will catch you later.